call the member for Forest. Thank you, Deputy Speaker. And I thank the member for Petrie for this very important motion. Um, as members will know, um, um, I've been working in cyber safety for many years and have delivered hundreds of presentations into schools, community groups and more broadly. And this is a very real issue, Member for Petrie, because I can give you the evidence from the children themselves, which many others uh, may struggle with. And one of the things I'd say to parents is, um, uh, why not have a look at your children's um, Google history? And you could even Google yourself certain words, cer certain uh, anatomical words, perhaps, and see what you can actually come up with, and how many of those sites actually ask a question about your age or what you can have access to. And I also know that some of the pornographic material that the young children that I speak to are looking at, um, they're actually choosing to like some of the items on there. And of course, out of those sites, it's not unusual for the site to harvest their, their name and attach it to that particular product. So I met one teacher, um, I'm, lots and lots of teachers, lots and lots, thousands of kids. And one teacher of year eight, they were year eight when they were coming into that school, told me about three years ago that 100% of her year eights had actually accessed pornography and serious pornography before entering her school. So that was the age, of course. And this gives these young people a very distorted view of relationships and sexual relationships. And of course, uh, we see I've also had to deal with the issues around physical and psychological damage that go with this from learning about sex as, uh, from a pornographic site. And I ask the parents when I have the parents' sessions, right now, where are your children, who are they with, and what are they doing? And generally they can answer me, and answer me very well. And when I say to them, well, when they're online, can you answer those same three questions? Where are they? What are they doing and who are they with? Because they are with someone, they are doing things, and they are somewhere. And these are very, very simple questions that I ask parents. And what I do know from those young people, they're allowed to have their devices in their rooms 24 hours a day, seven days a week. And often there is unlimited access for those young people. And uh, I also know and warn parents about that secret calculator, which is like a vault. And if, depending on how much is stored in that vault, you may find some very interesting information and photos in that. And of course, it's very important for parents to communicate with their children before the first device is given. The family needs to have a discussion as a family about these devices. What are the safety issues, the security issues? How are we going to use it as a family? What rules are we going to put in place for each other? And we all need to, to work with these rules in our family. And we all need to know the security strengths and weaknesses and some of the things that we might come in, come in touch with. And the young kids need to know how to stay in control. And I ask them to actually help every other generation. I ask them whether they know more about online and devices than their parents, their grandparents and their younger siblings. And the answer is yes, they do. So I say, well, they're a key part of the answer. And they're fantastic with technology and they do need to stay in control. And of course, there are some very good programs out there, and uh, we, they do need to stay in control in this space. And when I looked at one of the articles, um, this is just some of the evidence, I saw an article going back to 2015 in a local uh, Sunday Times, and it says in this article that on average, children are 11 when they're first exposed to online pornography and that there are over 430 million related, uh, porn-related search items online. 430 million. Mm. So your chances of bringing one up are very real, and uh, they are for children. And most of the popular sites stream hundreds of thousands of short porn clips under explicit pornographic categories. They are very easy to find. Users can even upload their own material onto these sites. And if you go into the gonzo porn space, you'll find that there is no actual pretense of a plot required. They, are, they use descriptors such as 18 and abused, or cute girl ruined or destroyed, when we talk about violence against women and what this amounts to. And it contains, these contain material that 
um, show everything from violation, humiliation and the degradation of women. And that's just a start. And uh, Deputy Speaker, I seek leave to continue, please. The member has leave to continue. Thank you. And I thank the member opposite as well. And I saw the research as well uh, that was quoted from the US that showed that 88% of some popular porn contains physical violence um, and 49% verbal aggression, with women always the target. So teenagers as young as 15 and young women are seeking um, uh, treatment. And um, I've spoken to some GPs as to what's actually happening because they're learning about sex from a pornography site. And of course, there are real um, physical risks in this. And uh, there's, uh, there, there is an increase in this type of behaviour. And I saw um, a, a Netflix documentary was um, promoted, Hot Girls Wanted. There you go. And uh, international pornography sites don't actually ask for age verification. A child can claim to be over 18 and don't, most of those sites don't even have the capacity to check their age. So it's out there, it's there for children. It's just a click or the wrong word away. And sometimes it's just kids being kids and yet they have access to this material. And I looked at that um, secret calculator, that Vault app. And of course this allows for storage of items in a hidden folder. It's disguised as a calculator. It can be used to store inappropriate content and parents do need to be aware and block these forms, um, these particular apps. And I think parents uh, do need to install filters and software onto computers to block explicit adult sites. And um, um, there is a real need um, to, to communicate with your children, to reinforce um, good relationships. The Choose Respect program works very well and programs around respectful relationships. And I would encourage every parent to have a look at the iParent check the Think You Know website, some wonderful stuff on there for parents, and uh, to communicate constantly with um, their children. And of course, um, the iParent says there are seven ways to make your home cyber safe, according to um, iParent, and I'd encourage every parent to stay, to, to look at those. And um, block, delete, keep the content reported. Young people need to stay in control um, online, as do parents, and, and I encourage every parent to have that discussion with your children as early as possible before the first device is given. Yeah, yeah. Thank you, yeah, Chair. Thank you. Yeah, yeah.